Hey, hello, and welcome to episode 110 of the Town Hall Academy. Hey, did you ever just sat in deep thought about your labor rate and the menu of charges for your services? Hmm. Are you charging what you're worth? Well, we're taking a deep dive into this exact topic. Talking about getting better, and one of the things was raising labor rates. I mean, how are you going to train? How are you going to afford it? How are you going to be able to pay that quality technician? let alone ADOS is here. How are we going to buy, you know, any of the equipment, the subscriptions? Um, we have to be in front of it, not behind it. Welcome automotive aftermarketers to a remarkable results radio town hall Academy. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hey, Carm Capriato here. How are you? Hey, prepare for a lively discussion on a topic that is foremost in the minds of aftermarket service professionals. Are you able to charge for what you are worth? Hear from three of your industry's colleagues as they open up this topic just for you. Hey, I want to thank Jasper Engines for their continued support of the Town Hall Academy. You know, a new vehicle may look and smell nice, but they come with seemingly endless monthly payments, higher license fees, and higher insurance premiums. Now, here's the better solution for your customer. Remanufactured components from Jasper means a new lease on life for your customer's trusted old friend. Are you listening to the podcast on a mobile device? Well, great, and thank you. If you're not listening mobile, then you can find a listening app on my website at remarkableresults.biz slash app. That's A-P-P. Using your commute and even exercise time to continue your aftermarket studies is the new way to learn. These podcasts, where we talk the business of the aftermarket, help you become a better version of yourself. Hey, don't forget about the power of the books page on my website. Just about every book we've ever talked about or mentioned is listed there. If you want an overview of powerful reading to take your life and career into another level, check out the books page because leaders are readers. Hey, with me on this Academy panel is Tom Palermo from Preferred Automotive Specialties, Philadelphia, PA, and former Napa ASE Technician of the Year, 2015. David Justice is here, former multi-shop owner from Cleveland, Ohio, and president of Repair Shop of Tomorrow, and Mark Kola from Seymour's Garage in San Antonio, Texas, and founder of CarFest. Hey, no need for a pen or paper. The show notes are already done for you. All the talking points are there. Find them at remarkableresults.biz slash a110. So we're talking about charging what we are worth. So we're getting into things like professional courtesy, labor rates, training, having the right value proposition for your customers so you can charge accordingly. The labor rate spread in our communities are huge and why shouldn't we be afraid to charge what you're worth? You've invested a lot in your business and need to be paid for this. Listen to why confidence in your skills and abilities will help you charge accordingly. <laughs> Okay, so let's jump in it. Charging what we're worth. Tom, there's so many areas that we can talk about. Uh, let's get into something very obvious. Uh, there's some basics. But let's dive into, are we charging enough for diagnostics? That's a... Uh... That's that's critical um, today. And, and I'll be honest with you, it's a much easier sell than it used to be. Um, you, you know, vehicles are a lot more complicated than they than they used to be. So customers are generally a little bit more willing to it, it pay you for diagnostics. There's still a lot of guys out there who feel like if they go to somebody and say, hey, you know, I need an hour and a half or whatever to check, you know, to check this check engine light and see what's going on. They feel they're going to get pushback and they're they, they won't do it. And that's a that's a huge mistake, because when you if you factor in the amount of money that you spend in information services, uh, scan tools, obviously, you know, your labor burn, all that all that adds up. You have to get paid for what you know, for the for the skills you have, the skills your people have and the tools that you give them to accomplish the goal of fixing the car. And we all know there are some bigger box stores out there that will plug into your car and, you know, give you a free diagnostics. <laughs> that doesn't always work. And uh, we have seen people come in who have gone down that road. And, uh, you know, when you get in the car and you see a pile of parts sitting on the passenger seat, <laughs> they're waiting to return to that particular box store. That's a customer that has realized that it's time to, you know, it's time to let a professional look at the car, you know, gi you know, give it, give it a once over and, and give you an accurate diagnosis. It, it's, it's, 
it's one of the most important things I think we can do now because cars are made better now. They do last longer, but when they have problems, they're usually a lot more complicated. They require a lot more skill to fix, a lot, a lot more specialty tools are involved. So those things cost money and, you know, that has to get passed along. You know, yeah. Tom brings up such a great point. He says you can drive up to a big box store, plug in, and you can get a list of, oh, my God, uh, so it hurt over here? This is what's wrong, right? And so, <laughs> Mark, can you drive up to a big box store and get some lawyerly advice? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think they have that, and I think you get what you pay for. Exactly. Uh, right. and, and, what, what free advice is worth exactly what you yeah. paid for it, right? Yeah. I love it. And I can, and you know, what was so great here, Tom and Carmen, and Dave, as I was listening to, to Tom share our feelings that we all know and our, and the facts that we know is we were a bunch of bobbleheads. We were all sitting there going, yeah, you're right. You're right. And, and, and we have too many of those folks out there that, that will sit in front of them and they'll bobble their head and agree. But then when they turn around and, and go back to their shop, they fall back into what you're describing. Uh, Tom, and that is that, you know, they just can't get the confidence to charge because they haven't, de they've decided that their, that their net worth or their, or their worth is something different than it really is. They don't give themselves enough credit and they don't do that addition of, Hey man, this is what it costs me. They don't look at it. But one thing I, that you, you sparked, uh, a thought that I do, um, and that is when you talked about the big box store. I'm going in and, and, and getting a diagnostic. I put an end to that in my culture a few years ago. And I make it plain and clear for everybody. I scan your car for free. No problem. I'll scan for your check engine light. I'll do that for free, just like the big box stores. But scanning and diagnosing are two different things. And, Very much so. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. and yeah. I think that's a great tool. If you just say, look, you know what? We scan for free, just like the big box store. The difference is we're not, we don't have an inventory of a bunch of parts that we're got some guy that hadn't been trained that's saying, well, maybe it's one of those five items. And I just go down that road depending. And I teach my guys to go down that road. A, you're having conversation, you're speaking the truth and B, you're educating you're, you're educating them, which is part of what we are, is educating the public. Hey, Mark, in our case as well, I agree with you wholeheartedly. What we would do is call it a 10-minute preliminary inspection. And, yes, we would scan that code. We would pull the code. We would discern if it was going to be into a level one, level two, or a level three diag. Uh, if it was a simple just code, we'd pull a flow chart, go to the client. We'd explain here's the tests that we need to run. And I like that word, tests. Mm -hmm. That's where we need to start. It's going to cost this much money to get started. And you can basically, um, by doing that, you can clarify with your customer if they really truly want to fix the vehicle. You almost wow. qualify. You're right. I, you I are think, qualifying them. Yeah, I, I think, like I said before, most customers are now used to that and they understand that. Really, when you think about it, and it's funny how this all happened. I, I've been doing this a while and, you know, we see, you know, in the aftermarket, we're seeing cars that are a little bit older, but now we're starting to see, I mean, we do a lot of fleet work, so I see a lot of new, newer vehicles as well. But even a lot of the independents are starting to see these cars come in with all the infotainment systems in them and all that. And, you know, it's funny, for the longest time, these cars have been difficult to diagnose for a long time. They've been pretty complicated for a while. But once they put Wi-Fi and cellular service and, you know, they had touch screens, and people started, you know, looking at that saying, whoa, these things are really, really complicated. I need somebody who knows what they're doing to to do this. I, you know, they can't. They have trouble setting up their Wi-Fi in their own house. To, you know, how are they gonna, how are they gonna navigate through the, you know, through fixing their car and, you know, that that kind of that kind of technology, really, I think is gonna help us move forward. You know, when it comes to this and 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 kind of propel our our the way people think of us to a more professional level because they they're gonna realize that this is not this is not just a guy on the on the corner who's changing oil and putting in spark plugs. These guys are, you know, these guys are, are like, they're like doctors, what they have to do for these vehicles. You said the word confidence, and then you guys had a fabulous discussion. Confidence to charge, confidence to charge. I mean, to me, there's the biggest takeaway in the world. Did you ever go to a doctor or a dentist or any other professional that didn't have the confidence to charge? Yes and no, but I'd like to go right back to that. You asked that question a minute ago. Tom and, and, and Dave, a, a, a couple of months ago, I shared an invoice with CARM. And um, 
<clears throat> that invoice was for, and I don't have it in front of me. I think Carmen it was 22 and a half hours from an attorney. Is that right? Right, right, right. I remember. Yeah. 22 and a half hours. Um, and it was for an invention deal that I'm doing. And, uh, the, the total amount of that invoice was $18,800, 22 and a half hours. Now, do we want to compare ourselves to a doctor, a lawyer, whatever? I don't want to compare ourselves to anything. We're unique, but we are professionals. And, and so we are individually unique, but we are professionals. And I'm all about looking at what charging the right amount because we're not practicing. And I'm going to get on my high horse for a second, but we're not practicing. And I don't mean this to any of my doctor or lawyer friends, but they hang a sign over their door. And the lawyers have a sign that says practice in law. And the doctors have a sign that says practice in medicine. Well, there's not a sign over my door that says practice in fixing your car. And well, we don't bury our dead. Right? That's exactly yeah. right. We don't. we don't bury our mistakes. Yeah. And, and, we, and we guarantee our work and we're not practicing. A little bit, a little bit on the edge there of uh, being a little bit coarse, but that's a, that's a reality. And, and depending on who our audience is and Dave, with who you're working with now with your consulting business, what a great opportunity you have to be able to go to these guys and pick out what their personality is and how they're going to listen. And you might be able to take that approach with them where another guy, you may have to soften it in. But if we all find the way to find the confidence level of our peers and increase their confidence level, when it's, when it's valid, we don't want to build anybody up falsely, then we will get to a common labor rate. But right now, $65 to $265, that's too big of a spread. The key here, there, there's, there's, there is one important thing to think about when you're talking about that. You're 100% right, Mark. The, what, what has to happen in our industry, and this might be getting a little bit off topic, Carm, but I think it comes, it'll, it, it comes back to it. Go for it. You, we, <laughs> have to, we have to, we have to, being as we're professionals, you can't have two shops that are going to badmouth each other or multiple shops are going to badmouth each other and try to undercut, undercut each other just to get jobs and things like we have to, we have to be fair. Okay. If somebody's not being fair or somebody's wrong, that's one thing. But a lot of times what I see out where I'm at, I don't know what it's like where you guys are at is you'll have, you know, shops that'll always be just a little bit cheaper. They do it just, just to make, just to get people to come to them. We have to, you don't see doctors bad mouthing other doctors. You don't see lawyers generally bad mouthing other lawyers, not in public anyway. They may do it amongst their own peers, but we have to stop doing that as an industry. We need to work together. Like you, like you said, Mark, you know, you're going from $65 to $220 in labor rate. There's a problem there. Somewhere in the middle lies the answer. And there can be varying labor rates based on, you know, difficulty of vehicles and things like that. But that's a pretty big spread. It and is. I, and I think. And, 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 and to, to be fair, a lot of the vehicles that we're all seeing, seeing are the same vehicles. We're all, you know, for, for the most part, 80% of the time, we're all seeing the same vehicles. And that's the unique part about being an independent is we see everything. That's right. We're not, we're not a dealer. We don't see just one brand of car we're, or whatever, you know, whatever dealership, you know, whatever brands that dealer group may have. We see everything. So that makes us extra unique because we have to be able to fix all those vehicles. And like you said, hanging a sign over the door, we, we don't practice. We get, we get the job done. That's our job. And, you know, and, and those of us that, that, that can understand that and apply that to educating our customers, providing a good product and a fair product will be successful. And, 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 and I think that coupled with the way technology is going is going to help bring our industry kicking and screaming while it may be to the level that it really should be at. Tom, to your point too, um, professional courtesy is what I think the doctors, lawyers call it. I don't understand why we don't have it for our industry. Uh, my biggest point is, is competition is good, guys. Mm -hmm. We want that to happen because when the tide <laughs> rises, we all want to raise the bar. And, and to me, it, 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 cheap is just wrong. Yeah. I want outstanding. I want value. I right. want my customer to come in and understand the value of doing business with my company. I want them to look at the perception of my business and understand why we're able to charge. In, in, when I was a dealer, I had clients that would come in and say, you know, Dave, you're expensive. And I would, you know, 
I kind of yeah. like, I know, I know. <laughs> but um, that gentleman there, he's ASE master, he's L1, he's so on and so forth. And I would mention, Mrs. Jones, um, we're always sending you value-added propositions. And as well, when you come in, if you ever had a problem, you know that there's no argument here. We're taking care of it. Mm -hmm. And she goes, Dave, I understand. That's why I do business with you. Yeah. So it's value, trust, perception. But you know what? That all starts with us. It starts Agreed. with us. It starts with us going out of our way to make sure that we're providing the best product to the customer. And by doing that, I mean doing things like digital vehicle inspections, ASE certification, training on a regular basis. I, I was in a training class last night. I didn't get home until midnight, you know, um, and I had, I had nine of my guys there, you know, so they're, you know, the, the, it, it starts with us. We need to embrace the fact that we are professionals and that we do, what we do is very specialized. And when you really think about it and the technician shortage definitely bears this out, there's not a lot of people that can do what we do. So that's worth, that, that's worth something, you know, that is, that is really worth something. And by everybody trying to, you know, move in the same direction, as you so succinctly put it, rising tide lifts all boats. So, you Agreed. Know. so like perception, I just want to spend just a second on perception. I mean, people think perception is, Hey, how's my building look from the outside? Well, in today's world with our millennials and, and everybody, it starts with having a solid website. OK, it starts with having great reviews. What is what is my uh, a Facebook presence in the area? Um, what's my community involvement? OK, these are all things that per people perceive about our business and about us being professionals. To me, this is all part of what we need to do and and, and change the mentality uh, of our industry, because I, I think we're pretty awesome. <laughs> and, and, and personally, and, and, and I mean, there's a lot of fantastic people. I had uh, an awesome opportunity to be in, in Kansas City here um, at, at Vision, if I can say that. Yeah. And there were so many of the independent folks sitting there and talking. It was awesome. Talking about getting better. And one of the things was raising labor rates. I mean, how, you, how are you going to train? How are you going to afford it? How are you going to be able to pay that quality technician? let alone ADOS is here. How are we going to buy, um, you know, any of the equipment, the subscriptions? Um, we have to be in front of it, not behind it. Okay, your customer's engine or transmission has failed, but now is not the time for them to trade their vehicle. Not without a working engine or transmission. Besides, would they have kept their vehicle another three to five years if their engine or transmission had not let them down? Well, if you answered yes, then Jasper Engines and Transmissions is your choice to give your customer's vehicle new life and many thousands of miles of enjoyable driving performance. When considering the high cost of a new or newer used vehicle, there's a pretty good case to be made for your customers to replace a drivetrain component that has failed or is delivering poor performance, rather than trading their car, truck, van, or SUV. Install a quality remanufactured Jasper product for less than your customer would have to invest in a different vehicle. Go to jasperengines.com to learn more about the money-saving value of Jasper. I need to jump in real quick here. I was uh, in the studio at, at Vision. Uh, again, uh, door open, everyone coming in to say hi and hanging out and discussing things. And we were into this training piece and we were into discussing daytime, nighttime training, which we've, we've covered on the show before. So... A business coach was in there and he goes, I know exactly how we can solve the problem of daytime, nighttime training. Every excuse you mount on the left-hand side of the page that says, listen, um, I can't let, can't let my guys go, but we also know that they're exhausted and tired at the end of the day and their 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 intake is, isn't as big. I'm sure, John, even though you were there last night, some stuff was left on the table because the guys were tired, right? Absolutely. And so... Um, I, my my answer was, well, let's just get the aftermarket people to never schedule another nighttime and only do daytime. And I says, and if that's the only choice, <laughs> and a business coach said to me, I'm sorry to disrespect your answer, but it's wrong. And I said, teach me. And he said, everybody needs to raise their labor rate 25 bucks. 
Amen. And and his and 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 the solution not only was you can then cover all of whatever you would have thought you lost because if if that's an expense and part of the problem is that the daytime training may hurt some of your productivity, make it up in the labor rate. And I said makes a lot of sense to me. So let's talk about raising labor rates. What is everybody's labor rate? Mine's one twenty eight on the baseline and one fifty on the hard line. Mine is uh, ninety nine ninety five for uh, regular mechanical work. Um, larger trucks is more than that. We because we do a lot of fleet work. That's one fifteen, and uh, diagnostics is uh, you know we usually try to get about one hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty dollars for diagnostics. Interesting. Let me just uh, throw up San Antonio, Philadelphia. Philadelphia yeah. is a bigger town, higher cost of living. Uh I don't know. San, I I wouldn't know San Antonio, so I I, I they're comparable. Okay. Are they? Well, let's throw in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. yeah. Okay, where are we there? 2014, one eleven eighty eight, just basic repair. Level one, one forty nine. Level two, one eighty nine, and so on. So right there, I'm is a low guy our, in a group. <laughs> yeah, and right there is part of our challenge. Yeah. Um, because it is going to be geographical, but at least we all, the three of us. We, at least we recognize that you can't do it for one fee. There are different things, okay, and there are menu pricing options and this, that, and the other. But my my hundred and fifty, it, it's solid and it's minimum one hour. And if it comes from another facility, it's a minimum two hours. And I but, like it. And and that's exactly how I do it because in the end, those people that lock in with you. They get it, and then they figure out, especially it's so exciting when it's cheaper in the end. Example, I'll just give you a quick one. We all got war stories, but here's one. Local shop here in town does $6,700 worth of work to a 2009 5.9 Cummings to tell the people that they needed to do a $15,000 motor. Now, that's a problem. They did a turbo, and they did a fuel injection system, Okay. There is no way. And the first question I asked is, how's the after treatment of the exhaust? Oh, well, it's good. Really? It is? How did you test it? Well, uh, we we dropped the exhaust. And when we dropped the exhaust, um, then we did get some better performance, but that's why we put a turbo on it. Bad diagnostic, bad everything. Unfortunately, the guy's been around a long time, not throwing people under the bus. I got the vehicle over here had a bad DPF. I burned the DPF as well as put another deep, bought a DPF for my research, but I burned the DPF. It had an EGR wastegate problem, replaced the EGR wastegate problem, burned the DPF again, and then fixed the things that they had messed up. And so their bill was $5,000, but they spent, uh, it was six or $7,000 is what it was. And we're told that they needed 15. That kills our industry. No oh, matter cool. what, I mean, those bad stories go so much further. That's part of our problem is those guys. Go ahead. Guys, let's go down to the fact that did the, did the first garage mark make a few mistakes, uh, in, 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 in diagnostics? I mean, Tom, you, you, Mark and you guys, you're, you're, you're fleet specialists here. You're dealing with the big stuff. Why did the $6,700 thing happen to start with? Because they're inexperienced and they diagnosed it wrong and they were shotgunning it. You've got it right. You've got somebody throwing parts at it. You That's got all they were doing. Yeah. You have somebody who who and I, and you know again this is where you know I we have to be myself because we got to. I don't want to talk bad about anybody, but from the scenario that you're describing, it sounds like a possibly you know probably a lack of training, uh, maybe even a lack of, of of basic understanding of the theory and operation of the systems, and couple that with. Uh, you know, there may be a little of, uh, I don't know, let's throw this down there and kind of see what happens. That, that, and that happens, and you know, that happens a lot more with the, if you think it's hard to find an automotive technician, try finding a diesel guy. A diesel no, I, technician yeah, is tough to I, find. I, so you end up with, you can end up in a place where people are putting bodies in a shop and you may not necessarily be getting the best, you know, the best result. Again, training is, is really is critical and, you know, there has to be somebody, my personal opinion, if that, if something like that was going on in my shop, I would be asking questions. Why did you, why are you saying this? Show me what your diagnosis, tell me why, you know, show me your process of how you're getting to this and why you're saying what you're saying. Because 
we're going to have to be the one that's going to have to get the, the customer on the phone and explain this to them. And I, and then to go through all that and then have to, you know, call them up and say, Hey, you need a $15,000. That's, that's insanity. That's, and that's one and of that's, the things that we and fight. That's not even going to solve the problem. <laughs> no. And, that, and the proof is that we fixed it yeah. and we didn't do a motor. <laughs> so, so what I hear is a couple of things there. Um, and I don't want to talk poorly about anybody's business, but you said he's an older gentleman, so on and so forth. No, it's an they, older business. He's older a younger business, gentleman. Older business. Okay. Are they training? You know, no, it's that not. important. And, and there is. are they charging the right amount of money to be able to afford to train? No. And yeah, yes. Are they training? No. And are they charging the right amount of money? No. Mm -hmm. And that's what really hurts when you go, when you say, no, well, how did they get a bill for $7,500? Well, it's because they were not doing it right. And they were, I mean, and it doesn't cost $7,500 to put a turbo in a Huey system on a 2009-59. It doesn't. But, hey, Mark, with that client, with what you were able to do, did you share the value of doing oh, you business bet. with you? And what happens to price objection next time they come in? They found their guy. Gone, right. Man. And we know what the benefits they are. They found their guy. You, the three of us are fine. What our job is to do is find out, which goes back to vision and goes back to CarFest, which Carm alluded to earlier, and, and David also alluded to in the community. And that is, and, and Tom's alluded to too, we just need to have unity is what we need. We need a unified voice, and we need to get our business guys to understand that and all of us see the problems, just none of us have set a path and a course to move forward, which segueing is what created CarFest. I mean, long after I'm dead and gone, CarFest should still be going, and we should be getting improvements in the industry as a direct result and an indirect result from bringing the community together and 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 and, and exploit not exploiting but improving our industry through unity in, in the community. I, you know what? I, I just thought of something while you were while you were talking about that. We're talking about not talking bad about somebody else's business, and you know, being try to try to work together. You, you know, doctors collaborate with each other. You bet. So, wouldn't it be nice if this person or who, who you know or shop had an issue? Maybe they weren't one hundred percent sure. And they were able to reach out to somebody like yourself who knew and say, "Hey, you know, I got this going on. What you know? What do you think?" I've had other people from other shops call me and say, hey, what do you think? And I've helped them. I have no problem doing that. And this goes back to competition is a good thing. But also being collaborative also is it's invaluable because you're if you're if we're all able to collaborate with each other and run and bounce things off each other, if we're having a problem. I understand this particular case. This is a training issue and there's there's some other issues going on there. But still take that take that problem and turn it into a teachable moment you'll help make that shop a better shop again and, and you and, and and for free I, or, you know or for your time you know but my you know I, i'm sure dave and mark you know i'm sure you'll agree with me on this i'll help anybody with anything that i could possibly help them with and i don't expect anything in return I, i'm more than happy you know if somebody reaches out to me and says hey what do you think what do you this what do you that if i can help them I'm, I'm all for it because it brings our industry up as a whole. It'll Absolutely. help. In, in the end, we all benefit. So in our groups, we call it community. We're a community. And so we have a community Facebook page. And if there's challenges, it gets thrown up uh, there. And there is almost immediate responses. Carm, I don't, you know, you're, you're such a huge uh, um, influence in the industry. Um, Love to be able to work with you, and I'm sure everybody sitting at this panel, Mark and Tom, to be able to get some kind of collaboration. I mean, we have the big parts stores, uh, parts companies, excuse me. They have in Napa BDGs. We have 20 groups. We need to set some kind of a forum, as, as Tom and Mark are talking about, where we can actually help each other. And um, it, it, it would make a difference in the industry, and I feel it. No pressure, Carmen. No, yeah, right. No, <laughs> guys. Um, Carm, put it on your to-do list. There's a, it, it is. It, yeah. No, the, yeah. the fact of the matter, it is, guys. And and I, I just, there's not a lot I can't tell you, but there's something out there a uh, brewing, and it keeps gro grooming, grooming up to that uh, that that high spot on the to-do list where I have to face it and say, hmm, it's time. I couldn't help but you know, in 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 the last uh, discussion, the professional courtesy thing came back. 
to this collaborative thing, and I love it, guys. And and uh, to me, there's there's a big there's a big takeaway. If you're stuck, and the guy down the street or the the, the guy across town that you happen to know in some capacity can can be there to help you. Can I speak to that, Carm? Please. And and plugging Carfest, but understanding that it came, it's coming from this conversation that we've had that we're having now and that we've had in the past is that's what's so great about Carfest, especially in this fourth year. We have 25 shops that come together now on one weekend. Each shop is assigned a bay and each shop is assigned a car. And then you have those 25 shops in a 60,000 square foot area working together. And with that, you have the mediums of the vendors and the, the edge, all the professional service providers there to build that community, as David spoke to, um, so that we can get them to have that open dialogue. Now, not all 25 of these guys are going to leave the event and grow from there. But in the first three years, we have now found that we are starting to forge some new relationships. And I believe that's how we get it started in a local geographical area, because to go start something in the automotive industry like the medical industry has, we're too we're too strong headed. I mean, we're not going to get the AMA. We're not going to be able to create the, the American Medical Association. But if we do these things with the right like minded and like hearted people like a car fest, that's where we'll go. I'll, I'll leave it. At that. Um, and, and more to come on that is I'm going to is I'm going to be there in, in 28 days and do a live town hall from there and actually uh, walk away with some interviews. Uh, a phenomenal thing. Again, just go to uh, Mark Cola on the on the website and, and hear listen to all about it. But I'll be exposing it a little bit more in the next month. OK, our theme, our topic is is charging what we are worth. Um, if you get a chance, Tom, to look deep inside the P&L, doesn't that deep in your gut say you got to do something? Well, that's that that you have to. And, and I know a lot of guys that that have trouble with this because it can be kind of scary for some guys. But you you've got to have an accurate P&L. You've got to know what's going on in your business. I mean, that is that is the EKG of your business. It, without that, without knowing where you are, what, what your expenses are, what your overhead is, how, you know, you know, how you're structured. Uh, it's going to be tough to really make important decisions. Like what does my labor rate need to be? How am I going, you know, wh- where, where do I want to, where do my price margins, you know, where do my profit margins need to be on parts where, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can't make intelligent decisions about that unless you know where you're at and you have to, it's, it's critical. And, and, and burying your head in the sand is not going to solve the problem. You have to, you have to do it. And if you can't do it, if, if somebody's out there and they can't do it, th- that's one thing about the automotive industry. There are a ton of people out there who can help, you, you know, shops figure out at least how to do a basic P and L so they can tell whether or not they're, they're making money. I, I mean, it, it's, it's critical. It, it really is critical. And you know what you find once you, the, the thing with, about a P and L is there are numbers on a sheet and, you know, we all have heard the percentages and what we're supposed to see and what we're, what's good and what's bad. But, you know, if you really take the time to dive deep into those numbers, you realize that they're not just numbers on a pa- piece of paper. They actually tell a story. They, they, you know, you can see places when you look at expense lines where, Hey, why am I spending so much money here? Can I get a better, you know, can I do better here? Can I do better there? Maybe I'm not putting enough money towards advertising. Maybe I should be doing more with, you know, my, my, so, you know, my, my CRM company. Maybe you, once you start diving deep into the numbers and you start figuring those things out, you can make some really powerful decisions that can totally, totally transform your business. You're saying a ton there, Tom. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I really appreciate that. And one of the, one of the gaps that I can, I believe that exists out there is that I've got all these numbers on the page. And Dave, maybe you can speak to some of this stuff. There's all my numbers. Sure. Uh, oh my God, what do they mean? Uh, are, are, am I on a track of uh, industry standards? Number two, right. and number three. Oh my God, if I'm not, how, how do I fix it? You know, there, there. You, you could, you could look at fifty numbers, but there's only three that will make maybe the biggest difference for you. So um, in Repair Shop Tomorrow, our business that I consult with, we build what we call a business flowchart, and it's all directed through system, operation, and procedure. Uh, 
Um, we have a manager sheet, a daily tracker, and then I have a product called Labor Profit Management. Sorry to plug, but we look at productivity, efficiency, and effective labor rates on the labor side of the business. So it is absolutely imperative that we can read a P&L and understand it. But if, you know, you look at your eight critical KPIs, productivity, efficiency, effective labor rate, uh, labor profit, labor profit percentage, gross net, and CSI, if you control those, your P&Ls usually look pretty good. But it needs to be done through system, operation, and procedure. And, um, again, there's many, many coaching groups. I would suggest people get help if they need help. But, um, you know, to manage the type of businesses we do, to be able to afford the kind of technicians that, that what we're going to need to pay them, to be able to tool the businesses correctly that we're going to need in tooling, and, and let alone make the kind of living you deserve, it's, it's imperative that we have system operation procedure. Amen. 100%. One of you mentioned earlier a, a perception. Uh, I hear I'm getting value. I'm, I'm coming into this place saying, you know what? I come here. I pay a little bit more each and every time. But my experience is right. I trust them. It seems to be always fixed the first time. And if not, I've got this open dialogue with Tom and Mark and, and Dave to come in because they're going to make it right. But does making it right mean free or do you... You, you know, because in this whole theme, charging what we are worth, do I do I believe I can come back and have the job done again for free? Or am I told, hey, listen, you know, uh, it's something else this is going to cost. How, how's that dialogue work? Um, many groups talk about the 300 percent rule and so on and so forth. And we were always full disclosure. So we're going to explain what the customer needs all the time, it's not something we do to them. It's something we do for them. And in doing that, um, our whole point is to educate. And, and that's, that's the whole thing that our advisors and jobs are, is to educate that client on what they need and the benefit of doing those services and how it's going to benefit them long term. Listen, we've all had times where we've had to take it on the chin. And, you know, and what we had to do. And and there's there are those times, I'm, uh, you know, I'd be I'd be lying if I said that there those those situations didn't exist. But you can make them very few and far between, by, as Dave said, uh, educating your customer from the start. A lot of times that stuff like that happens, Corm, you're dealing with a secondary issue that probably had 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 the customer been educated properly during the first repair, like, Hey, we need to do this before we can move on. You know, those kind of, you know, those kind of conversations, then there's, then the surprise level is lower, you know? And, and if you, and if you, if you're, if you're speaking to your customers and this goes really to the, to, to your service advisors, whoever is actually interfacing with the customer, they've got to be able to translate that technical jargon into real world language for them. And they need to do it in an effective manner. And, and if they have to relate it to something that they may understand in order to, 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 to give them the best experience possible, number one, but also to, to, to have them understand that we're dealing, we can be dealing with a moving target at times. So, you know, it's that, it's that education part that really, really comes in handy. And it's, it's a necessity that's training and that's having the tools for, your technicians and your service advisors to be able to educate the customer. I'll, I'm going to say it again. DVIs are huge there because you can use those. And there's a lot of good ones out there. There's a lot of good companies now doing DVIs. Uh, you know, they all, they all have good stuff. Um, the, uh, but the ability to, to, to give somebody a clean uh, report with pictures and explanations and then have the ability to educate them from there, either through that document, because a lot of them have clickable PDFs with animations and things like that. Those, those kinds of things, not only does it, not only are you educating the customer, you're also building trust. Because, Absolutely. Because when they see, when you say, Hey, Mrs. Jones, your car needs a motor mount. She doesn't know what a motor mount is. She doesn't know what it looks like. She doesn't know what a good one looks like. And she doesn't know what a bad one looks like. But I guarantee you, if you show her a picture of a bad motor mount, She'll know what she'll know what's bad when she looks right. at it, you know. So that's where you can eliminate a lot of that, you know, a lot of your comebacks or a lot of your 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 problems where you have a secondary issue that needs to be resolved 
and, you know, have the customer not feel like, oh, they just misdiagnosed it the first time or they only told me this much. And, you know, now they said I need this. Now I need that. Dave, Mark, do you agree that uh, DVI is a is an anchor to being able to charge what you're worth? No, but but I agree with DVI, but I don't believe it's an anchor. I believe okay. it is one of the great tools and it is a tool of moving forward. But I, I also believe that that. You know, just the explanation. I agree with everything that everybody's saying. It simply goes back to, as David says, it's 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 systems, okay. And as as Tom is saying, it's communication with your customer, and and so those systems and communications. If you have the systems to to communicate, and you commu- communicate and do it in real world language, where you can create an analogy, which is what we do, and then at the end of the work order. There's always a please note, a handwritten please note. I have a rule with my service writers and service advisors because they are two different people, by the way. And I know that that's that's another whole topic for a show. But service writers and service advisors are two different people, and our industry needs to recognize that. But beyond that, what I have is you do not have a work order that has all these can push button things like – you know, you got this can job and this can job. I make my guys type it out. Whatever you said needs to be in print. And so it, it, we have can jobs for all oil, oil changes and maybe 10 can jobs. The rest of it, as soon as they try and create one, I just hit a delete button and send it on down the road. I want them to type it out. And I also want them to type out, listen, we did this. It needs to come back in for a follow-up check because of these instances of other things we told you that we may have an issue with. And we're going to do a no-charge follow-up check that's going to take you 15 to 30 minutes to make sure that all those components are working as they should. Now, we can only put the ball in their court and go from there. But that's that last shot rule too. Yeah, but if you're using a CRM company and you're using your management software properly, you can at least have another opportunity like you're like you're talking about to get that customer to 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 address if you will to what touch you're, them. what you're trying what you're trying to what what you're trying to the value you're trying to give them whether they do it, you're 100% right mark whether they do it or not is is completely up to them um but uh you know things like deferred work and you know in management system that's a huge 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 opportunity if you're using it correctly and if you're CRM, whoever you're using for CRM, or if you're doing it yourself. There's we do it internal. Okay. So, you know, whoever's doing it, you are you have a huge opportunity there. And again, we're providing value to the customer. What you're, uh, my personal opinion, when you're reaching out to a customer for something like that, what you're saying to them subconsciously is, listen, I'm here to help you take care of your vehicle. I want to alleviate the burden of you having to worry about, ah, oh, did he say, you know, did Mark say I needed brakes three months ago? Did he say I could make it six months or nine months? I don't remember. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? So that, no, you're right. that's where I think we as an industry have a huge opportunity to build that trust and get, and, and let people understand that much like a doctor, I know we don't want to compare ourselves to doctors, but much like that, we're interested in the health of their vehicle and, and thereby the, the, you know, their well being as well. I agree with everything you said. Let me just run back to one point though. Mm -hmm. What I was referring to is the specific about what Carm said about what happens when you have a vehicle that comes back and the customer thinks it's the same problem. Oh yeah. Right. And so what I'm talking about is you make sure that you cover that as you said, but we do it in our manner with a, a note that is personal. It okay. says, hey, remember what we said, and by the way, you need to come back. I wasn't talking about deferred work. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I talking, misunderstood you. Yeah, I, so, so I, very I, similar. Can I, ask, but, can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. Do you document, do you keep a copy, at a, and this is, I, we're, again, off of Louise a little bit. I'm just curious because that's, that's an interesting idea, and I like the personalization there. But do, how do you document it in your management system so that six months from now you remember that you wrote that handwritten note on there? Do you keep a copy, a physical copy? No, it's not, copy it's not, it's not a handwritten note. It is an individually typed note. So it's oh, okay. A no, an actual it's, a, a so type it's note. There, it's so there digitally. It. It's there on the hard copy. It's there on their copy. I was thinking that's a neat idea if you were doing it handwritten. I was like, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty. Uh, no, what we do when we, when we go over it is we just write a little thank you or a smiley face okay. and we go over it at the counter with them. Right, right, right. That's the, that's the final hand touch because you've already talked to them on the phone or however right. you've communicated. But when they come to pick the car up, that, that, that's, that's right. the final piece. The last opportunity, 100%. Yeah. If I could just 
touch base. I agree with everything both you guys are saying. For me, DVI, it's not, you know, they say a picture is worth a, a thousand words. I think it's worth a thousand dollars. Um, <laughs> I like that. I, 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 I really you're do. right. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're going to be in our community, we stress DVI and it's just something we have to have. But the, the, the real, I think what, the sum of what we're talking about is the perception of what your customer sees from outside of the building. And then it's experience when they come in. Am I at the right place? Uh, DVI are, is, are they up to the technology? Do they meet and greet me the same way every time? You know, system operation procedure. Um, and I think all of this combined with your guys' great ideas is what allows us to build value for that client for us to be able to charge the dollars that we deserve. Amen. 100%. 100%. Uh, I'm going to ask you all to, uh, g you know, do us uh, you know, your final words, but I, I, I'm i going to get in front of you <laughs> and tell you, here's my <laughs> takeaway. The word, you hear, the title was charging what we are worth. That was our title today. My biggest takeaway is the word worth. It, it, it's, you know, T Tom, I think you mentioned it, you know, the confidence to charge. And then I kept thinking worth, what am I worth? Uh, I've trained, I, I, I took a big risk to become an entrepreneur to run my place. What am I worth? And I, I started to think, am I worth my rate? Uh, we have worth is a business to the community and the things that we're trying to do, our cost of training and people and, uh, and, and ad nauseum, what, what it costs to really run a great business today. And maybe that may move labor rates in the right direction. Maybe that'll g give us, you know, a greater relationship and, the, you know, the value perception that my rates up here. Why? Because I'm worth it. it wasn't there a big commercial? What, what, Oh, it was at L'Oreal. Yeah, because you're worth it. Remember, remember the, the the hair thing. Because I'm worth it. I don't have it, any hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hold on to mine for as long as I then can. Then you've right? never obviously <laughs> bought their product. Well, I think they sell it to ladies, but right. whatever, <laughs> whatever. So my big takeaway was worth. So let's we'll go around the room. David, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, I think that we need to uh, help the industry move forward as quickly as possible uh, through perception, education, and what we teach is a business shop flow. And it's from system operation procedure to your online presence to everything. So the perception of your business is something that that client wants to come in and, and, and uh, trade with you. Uh, I would say don't be afraid to charge what you're worth. Understand the, the, the time and the effort and, and the money that has gone into creating your own business and how proud you should be of that. And, and don't, don't make yourself feel like you're not worth what you are worth. And, and don't be afraid to collaborate with other people. I, I think that's one of the biggest things that we need to do. And it's a way that we can all help each other bring each other along. Join an organization, join a 20 group, join a, if you're in, if you're in auto care, join a business development group, get involved with your, with your fellow shop owners. And you're going to find when you do that, that you'll learn a lot, first of all. Uh, and, it, you know, you'll become a better shop for it. So thank you for that blueprint. We talk about that all the time. Yet there's probably 190,000 shops out there that need to hear it over and over and over. We got to drag them over the line. Who said that? So I'll continue to do this until everybody's on the ship. All right. Ooh. Amen. Is that okay? Right. That was right. good to me. Absolutely. Hey, Mark, I'll let you uh, give us the final word. I would wrap it up with saying I agree with everything that everybody said, um, Tom and, and Dave, and, and also your your coaching through this, Carm. And, and what I'm about to say, each one of you has already said without using the word. But to your point, Carm, about saying it over and over again, or whoever else said, drag them across the line. I have four core values that, that I know you guys have, and, and they're going to cross over. And my core values are community, education, excellence, and integrity. And I think when you take the integrity piece and you base everything and bounce everything off of that, then you will find how you will find, and you will find a way to charge what you're worth. If you bounce everything that you guys have talked about, off of the board of integrity, 
then I think that we'll we'll get there. Now, how we get that done with the other 190,000 shops, we'll leave that up to you, Carm. <laughs> I'm working another, on another it. Another item on your to-do list, Carm. <laughs> I am working on it. Oh, my God. Thank you so much, Tom Palermo, preferred automotive specialties in Philadelphia, PA, and the a former Napa ASE Technician of the Year 2015, David Justice, President, Repair Shop of Tomorrow. They're, they've all been on the show, so if you want to hear more from these guys, just type in their last name. And, and when we do the show notes page, it, uh, this whole thing will release, the video and the audio will release in the World Wide Web next Wednesday. And you go to the show notes page and you click, uh, let's look at their bios and click listen to the previous episodes here will automatically link all of them and of course thanks to mark kola from seymour's garage san antonio texas thanks for all you do carm thank you guys thanks everybody thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast until next time 